Parents Night In is the best show on YouTube. If you don't watch it, you suck. Justin and Kelly are here talking about all the movies and drinking the wine and beer. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. I said that wrong on purpose. I don't want you to think that I say it like that. (laughs) That would be embarrassing. Would be, because you're not six. (laughs) Welcome to Parents Night In, here at Enoughfit.com. We're watching a very romantic movie. Maybe the romantic movie of Uh, the 90s, anyway. You said it wrong. It's romanticist, Justin. Romanticist. Hold on, let me take that again. We're watching maybe the romanticist movie. Titanticist. <laughs> it's romantic, titanic. It's romantic, it's titanic. It's a wonderful show. Why are you singing <laughs> the thing from Kill Bill? What? That's what you were singing. <laughs> really? Romantic, titanic, Leo, Kate Winslet. I think That's it was your I'm subconscious going. saying you really want to watch Kill Bill. <sighs> Why don't you press play on the movie I do want to watch? It's just such a beautiful movie. Yes. It's one of those movies that like, oh, they played on TBS 19 times a day. And it's sort of a joke movie, except that when you watch it, you're like, I fucking love this movie. No, when it came out, it was definitely not a joke. How um, has it become a joke, though? I think because it was so overexposed and yeah. it made so much money and it won Best Picture. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were like, ah, it's fluff. But it was and so like, beautifully done. You know, in some ways it's fluff. but Oh, it's totally fluff. But it's, but it's just, good fluff. It's very well done. And Kate and Leo had wonderful chemistry, so much so that they made a movie called Kate and Leopold. They did that not. That has nothing to do with this, but no, they did. Meg Ryan and Hugh Jackman. Right, you made it sound like I was a they joke, in it. Kelly. <sighs> Fucking hell. They did make a movie together called Revolutionary Road. Yeah. Yeah. That was also an excellent movie. Yeah, huh. As we open, there's submersibles that don't at all look like they are from 1912. They're not supposed to be from 1912. Oh, we're supposed to be in the present day? Yeah. Oh, I was very confused about all this. They didn't this. have lights in 1912, Justin. I was Justin. very confused about this. I said, what's the big deal about Titanic sinking? That We already have submarines. What? A sinking ship and a submarine, two very different things. What are, Even in no, present day. No, a submarine if you, is literally a sinking ship. Isn't it? This has gone off the rails what? quite early. What are you talking about? That ship does not look clean. That submarine's dirty. Yeah. <laughs> It's a dirty submarine. Uh, that sounds like a fun band name. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Dirty Submarine. We all live in a dirty submarine. <laughs> when I was like eight or nine years old, my grandmother took me to the science museum because it was, uh, her company had like a big science day there because she worked for Raytheon. Mm. And um, the Omni Theater show was about a submersible like this. I think it's it was called Jason. I don't know what the acronym was for, but... It, July, August, September, October, November. No, it was not oh. that. But it was one of the first ones to get like really good footage of the Titanic. You know what the last name of the guy who, I believe, found the Titanic? Jason. Ballard. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's right. I like to think that he's a relative of mine. <laughs> I think it's important at the beginning of this to tell people why we say Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> because when I worked at the movie theater when this movie was out... Multiple people came up and said, give me one for Titanic, and it stuck. Yeah. And so Justin told me about that. No, I can't say Titanic. I, I have to say I Titanic. Yeah, I can't say it correctly it's, anymore. It's funny. It's like Bubrick. Stanley Bubrick. Someone got angry at us when they listened to our... Our Shining episode. Our Shining episode, because I kept calling him Stanley Bubrick. Why are you insulting him? I was like, hey, it's a joke. Lighten up. We both yeah, love the guy. It's not Stop a, it. Yeah, it's not an insult. It's just that we're immature. Immature. <laughs> So, uh, so if we say Titanic a lot, that's why. <laughs> we actually know it's Titanic. If we say Titanic, it's because we're idiots. Yeah, we're immature idiots <sighs> who just happen to like this movie. What's that guy's name? Bill Paxton. Right. He looks so different in every movie I've he's, seen him in. He's deceased, sadly. No, that was very sad. Heart attack? No, he, it was oh, like surgery, surgery or something. complications. Yeah. It's awful. Billy P. Is, uh, looks like a pirate with his, with his ring in Billy his ear. Billy P.? <laughs> Billy B. Bobby Ray. Um, Leo D. 
I saw this movie in the theater three times, maybe two for sure, maybe three. The first time I saw it, about seven eighths of the way into the movie, the movie broke. Oh. And we were, oh no, no, that was the second time I saw it because I remember saying I would have been fucking pissed yeah. if that happened the first time because like I mean, there's some know, key shit happening at the end. You know how it ends anyway. You know, yeah, <laughs> the for the boat. Sink, the ship sinks. I know how it ends for the boat. I, I didn't know. know how it ended for... Kate and Leo. Yeah. But I sobbed equally every time. That sort of thing happened uh, the first time I saw Fight Club. <gasps> they discovered during the last reel that there was no last reel. The studio accidentally sent two real sixes and forgot real seven. Oh no. So real six started over. I was like, uh, we saw this already. Is this part of the movie? Cause this is weird. Right. And then they stopped it and they were like, this was a weird artistic yeah, choice. Yeah, <laughs> We have no ending to this movie. So come back tomorrow. I was so fucking pissed. That is incredibly crazy. Yeah. Two hours into the movie that happened. I think this is an interesting beginning to the movie because well, it gives context. It does, but for the but story it, that you're about to see, it gives context, and it also is like, look at this terrible end. Yeah, and of course you know how it ends, so you know what we're looking at right now and why. But then you sort of get swept into this the, the next scene where like you actually see the, the ship in its time, right? And it just sort of sucks you into the story so far that like by the time you get to the end and it sinks again, you're like, oh crap. Like, you sort of remember, like, oh, yeah, this is not going to end well. <laughs> right. And it turns out they're not just looking for the Titanic at this point. They're looking for something else. They're looking for an object on the Titanic. Not even listening. Sorry, I was busy looking stuff up on Google. Google, there's stuff I must know, so I'm pressing the enter button. That was <laughs> it was it started not, well. Not great. I didn't. I wasn't in Sorry. love with the ending. Oh no! There's nothing in there. There's nothing in the safe. It's like Al Capone's vault. Hey, Bill Paxton, what'd you find? We ain't found shit. <laughs> James Cameron went on 12 dives to the real Titanic himself and found it an overwhelming emotional experience to actually see the sunken ship. During his first trip, he was so goal-oriented that he managed to film the shots he wanted, but as soon as he was back on the surface, he broke down in tears after realizing the magnitude of the historic tragedy that he mm -hmm. just witnessed. He ended up spending more time with the ship than its living passengers did. Wow. Yeah, he's been many times. Wow. And then he shot a documentary about it. Right. That's crazy, though, that he spent more time with the ship than its well, living passengers. I mean, it had one voyage. Right. Hi, Kate Winslet. It's drawing. <laughs> Kate Winslet. It's drawing. She looks so hot even in the drawing. The drawing was done by James Cameron himself. Hmm. I'm, I'm sure not alone in this, but this movie made me obviously fall in love with Kate Winslet. Yep. As a 19-year-old curvy redheaded woman at the mm. time that I saw this movie I was like fucking finally man because the 90s was a very hard time to be a curvy woman yeah, it was because the 90s was the era of very super skinny tiny sticky and little ladies it was a very unconventional choice to be a sexy romantic lead in a big she movie was. like this and this you know again folks this is not the Lizzo era right like this is when Courtney Cox most and, of them look like the granddaughter there yeah yeah like Courtney Cox and, and Jennifer Aniston and all those yep. guys well, like, were super duper skinny. And even though they started their shows as super skinny, they got skinnier as it yeah. went on. It was yep. just a very thin era, right? But also, there was a ton of press about how she was unconventional and how she was kind of chubby. Like people used, chubby. People used the word chubby Jesus. to describe her. And I remember watching the movie and thinking, she's fucking gorgeous. What is wrong with people? Yeah. And so I feel much better about teenagers who are growing up in today's landscape right. where quote unquote unconventional body sizes are no longer like a reason to become a pariah. Right. So some old ladies calling him. So they... And that's Gloria Stewart yep. of the Invisible Man fame. Yeah. Gloria Stewart learns a lot about acting between the Invisible Man and this movie. <laughs> I think she actually was nominated for supporting actress for this, wasn't she? She's like, oh yeah, that's me in the picture. That was, that was, my, that was my diamond. I believe James Cameron ended up marrying the granddaughter in real life. In real life? Yeah. Oh, wow. I believe she is his third wife. 
or maybe even fourth. He was he dated Linda Hamilton for a while. Mm. He, he was married to Catherine Bigelow and Gail Ann Hurd. Apparently, James Cameron is not very good at this marriage thing. I hope he realizes that if he finds that heart, it's not fucking his; it's hers. He's probably being paid by someone to find it. So I think what you're saying so, is so he, finders keepers, losers no, weepers. No, so I'm saying the claimant is probably the one paying him to go look for it. What you drinking tonight, Justin Ballard? I'm drinking the wine that you got me for Valentine's Day called <laughs> Freak Show. Freak Show. The Cabernet. It's a sweet little Cabernet Sauvignon. This is a cool transition, how the, she looks at the footage and, yeah, then, and then she becomes, sees the real, like she goes into her real memory of it. It's also very impressive that Cameron and his collaborators built an actual replica of the Titanic. It it's was, a beautiful replica. I think yeah. it was nine-tenths scale or something. He researched it very thoroughly to get the details right. James Cameron has his moments and like, I'm not excited about the million Avatar no, movies that he's planning on either. doing. But some, like when he does a movie like this, he does it well. Yes. Well, he's made some great movies. He's just like, he went 12 years after this before making Avatar. And now it's been 11 years since Avatar. He's like the 90s version of Francis Ford Coppola. Like he was prolific for a decade and a half or something. And then not at all. Mm. When I watch this now, I can tell that that's computer generated. Yeah, the CG. But I did not... not know that when I in 1998. You didn't know it was computer nope. generated. Nope. Oh, I could. You could still tell. You can tell, but I wasn't times, looking for it. No. I was like, wow, that's really impressive. The CG is uh, doesn't always hold up. It's like watching something on Netscape Navigator. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, it's Google Earth, and they're showing the Titanic. Hi, Kate. I love you. That hat. What? Look, it's Bob Cratchit. That guy's an asshole. Not Bob Cratchit, just hit David Warner that guy. in this movie. Yeah. From all experience. Billy Zane is so jerky. Yeah. And like pulls off that I am very important. I'm so important I'm I'm plucking my eyebrows, even though men in the nineteen tens didn't do such a thing. Well, I never noticed his eyebrows before. You You've never noticed it. that his eyebrows were plucked? No. Come on. I'm, I don't tend to stare at guys' eyebrows unless yeah, I know, they're but it's very obvious. unless they're grossly overgrown. They're playing cards, and one of their opponents uh, bet their titanic tickets. Their titan tickets. Titan tickets. He does a lot of woohoo's. Yeah, in this he movie. does. Yeah, he's a woo girl. We should go on a cruise, just not this one. Yeah. <laughs> that was a stupid line, and yet I loved it. <laughs> It's like a Groucho Marx line. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a wonderful night, but this wasn't it. <laughs> you know. Imagine how like wonderful it is to be like, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> like I'm, hugging. I, and I'm going to be dead in four days, but goodbye. Stop. What? It's so sad. It's true. That Olaf guy that punched the other guy in the face, they're going to be really <laughs> happy lucky. in a few days. Yeah. Oh, there was a real loser of that poker hand and it wasn't Olaf. Yeah, it was not Olaf. Jesus. <laughs> I found the music in this movie to be very, um, like, emotionally charged. It's James Horner. I like his stuff. His best score is Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Do, would you like to treat us to some of it? Would you like me to? <laughs> I just... <laughs> <laughs> Look, they have Picasso. Wow, Hockley. Cal's an idiot. You said two things that are absurd. You said God himself could not sink this ship, and Picasso won't amount to anything. Next thing he's going to do is oh, say... two. The presidency will always be a wonderful thing. <laughs> Next thing he'll say, the Red Sox will never win another World Series. <laughs> Look, it's Annie Wilkes from Misery. New money. I want to be new money. Yeah, like, who gives a shit how old your money is, man? Mm. Ma'am, you dropped your money. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice of you to tell her that. You could have just picked it up I and would, ran. I should have. Damn it. Then you would have been new money. <laughs> this is why you're not new money, Justin. Because I'm Because you nice. overlook opportunities like I'm, that. I'm too thoroughly decent. So we're watching, uh, we're watching them in the engine room. You want to hear something cool about the engine room? Everyone in the engine room drowned. <laughs> All the guys that are working in this engine room are yeah. five feet or so. Really? Because they wanted to make the to make room look, look that much bigger. Oh. That's an old Ridley Scott trick. 
Yeah, so that must be like that whole nine tenths thing. We have to get men that are nine tenths of the size because <laughs> the room is nine tenths of the size. <laughs> May you stoke that engine fire with the strength of ten fully grown men. <laughs> I'm the king of the world. Woo. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> mm, Jack Dawson says, I'm the king of the world within the next 45 seconds, or I give you my next paycheck. Again, not going to be new money that way. Oh. No, I am. Stop making stupid bets. Well, yeah, you're going to give me your paycheck, but if you get it right, then nothing happens. Oh, well. <laughs> You've gained nothing here. Shit. See, this shot is very, very CG. Very CG. That, that looks guy... like a video game. Yeah. That's ter- Even back then, I was like, eh, that shot's not great. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a video game. Like, you expect him to walk up, and you're going to have to press a button to hear what he has to say. And, like, the water in that shot, like, the waves breaking yeah. out off the ship are very fake looking. Yeah. Oh, he's woohooing again. Woohoo! Can we do a woohoo count? We're on two it's woohoos. Two woohoos. No, no, you, you can't. <laughs> Fabrizio? Fabrizio. No. That's. <laughs> It's like days away from us. Oh, there it is. I'm the king of the world. Woohoo. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So we're at four woos. Hey, David Lee Roth. Calm yourself. Oh, there was a yeehaw. Four woos and a yeehaw. Oh. I would also like you to go back and review the tape when you do the editing to find out if it was 45 seconds because I want your paycheck if it wasn't. For, it might have been more like 63. You know that all our money goes to the same place, right? It might have been more like 63. Uh-huh. Yeah, but if I get your next paycheck, I choose where the money goes. All the money goes to your gambling habit. <laughs> My gambling habit. Um, yes, I gamble that I'm going to buy things and you're not going to give me shit about it. That's my gambling. So he takes her cigarette and puts it out. And, and he orders for her. And orders for her. And uh, Miss Molly Brown, the unsinkable Molly Brown, looks at him like, well, you're a dick. <laughs> he wanted to convey size. Size <laughs> means stability. Who's Freud? Is he a passenger? <laughs> Mrs. Brown might be one of my favorite characters. Mrs. She's fun. Brown, stop encouraging my daughter. <laughs> Mrs. Brown, you don't have any daughters. Any daughters. <laughs> wow. Oh, no. Rose is in a panic. She's having a bit of a panic attack. She's running for the hills. Rose, you can stop running. All you need is some air. You have plenty of air. You're already in the air. You know who she needed? She needed to talk to Bob Harris. Bob would have patted her on the foot and said, you're not hopeless. And then he would have lipped your stocking. All better? Mm -hmm. There's a part of this scene that they, I feel like they took it a little too far. Is it that low cleavage? No, that's (laughs) the best part of the scene. When he's like helping her back in and she slips and then he's just holding her by just her hand. Yeah. But she's hanging completely off the boat. Yeah, it's, it's a like much. all right. It's not an action movie. Like, just have him sort of grab her around the waist and help her back in. That's. But the thing that helped that, with that, that is that, that it caused enough. the commotion that made them come running, that made everyone find out what happened. Otherwise, it would have remained a secret if he quietly helped her back in. There needed to be a drama and some I screaming. Yes. Do not presume to tell me what I will and will not do. You don't know me. Okay. I'm a good swimmer. I can keep up with a steamship. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that don't, was no, what he was implying. No problem. <laughs> well, where's he going to swim to? I don't know. As we learn later, the water's much too cold. Yes. He does this thing where he distracts her by telling her a story. That's a little dangerous. She could have been like, really? So, Chuck, whoa! <laughs> Chuck! Chuck! Nope. I don't think she'd be yelling. <laughs> that would be the end of that. God damn it, Rose. Oh, there was also a movie called The Ballad of Jack and Rose. Yes. Jesus. Neither one of them are in it. They named two movies after this. I don't think it's coincidence, Kelly. Jack and Rose came out after this? Yeah, 2005, I believe. She has another hand on the ship. No, I know. It's just, they could have made it a little bit less action movie near death. You know what I mean? Like, she could slip and scream, and but he's still sort of, she's not totally hanging off the ship by one hand. Yeah. Stupid, really. I was trying to kill myself, and he <laughs> talked me out of it, and and then I, I I just slipped. You know, happens all the time on these ships. You know, you've been on cruises before, Cal. You've tried to kill yourself, haven't you? Luckily, she turned him into a hero, so now he gets to go to dinner with the rich folk. That's right. I need to find a a rich person to pretend to save, so I can get dinner with rich folk. No. 
and then go on a date and then make love in a car and then die in a freezing Did cold I boat wreck. Did I say any of that? <laughs> I just want to have dinner at a oh. rich a rich place. I'll rent and, an Airbnb and, and I'll make you dinner. And not pay for it. Oh. Isn't that what everyone wants? Free dinner? <laughs> free rich free, dinner without paying? Free food and drink. That's what Mr. Scrooge says. You're really, really, really into this idea of the new money. Mr. S- I love new money. It's my favorite kind of money. <laughs> I haven't spent it yet. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Bob Cratchit, why don't you shut the fuck up before I decide that your service is no longer required? Why don't you go take care of your stupid six kids? So it it occurred to him that, uh, the Mr. Cratchit, that Leo's jacket was off and his shoes were untied. (laughs) Which makes it seem like maybe it wasn't such a sudden little accident. It wasn't so sudden, but he didn't, it's not his fault. No, I know. He should have said, yeah, you're right. It's not what? his fault that Rose's life is you're, terrible. You're right. It wasn't sudden. Rose would rather kill herself than be around you. I mean, <laughs> whose fault is it now, Bob? She's not killing herself because of Bob. She's killing herself because of Cal. Yeah, but Bob doesn't know that. <laughs> Something tells me Bob wouldn't fall for it. <laughs> so after Bob's this not movie, as dumb as Cal. was there a part of you that was like, I need to go by my girlfriend, the heart of the ocean. No, after this movie, there was a part of me that was like, I need to move to fucking L.A. and marry Kate Winslet. That's that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, okay. Are you ever going to buy me a heart of the ocean? Once I become new money, yes. (laughs) Not a moment before. Then I will dye my hair flaming red. Okay. Will you wear this and only this for me so I can draw you? I could do that. Okay. Fortunately, you are a good drawer. Because if you I, I were, am a good drawer. If you were not a good drawer, I would say no, because then I might look like some kind of weird... You would look like a Picasso. Yeah. <laughs> He's not going to amount to anything. Yeah, well, that's true. So now they're creating a little bit of a friendship here. They're forging a little bit of a, of a walking friend symposium. <laughs> a walking friend symposium. What do you call it? When you and I started bonding at work, did you go home and say, you know that guy Justin? He and I had a walking friend symposium today. It was the well, greatest experience of my life. Ours was more of a drinking friend symposium. We didn't really go for walks. We didn't walks. really walk so much. We drank and Yeah, like symposed. went to bars and... Boobies! Wow. What? Boobs. Boobs and bush. <laughs> uh, fleshofthestars.com. Drawings. <laughs> None of these are stars. Flesh drawings of the nonstars.com. <laughs> <laughs> that lady has hairy armpits. Armpits? That's because Billy Madison didn't <laughs> stay home to shave them. <laughs> Maybe you can stay home and help me shave my armpits. Go, go to school. Imagine not wanting to hang out with somebody because they didn't inherit their fortune. Justin. What? They don't know how to act because they haven't always had money. And apparently money and personalities are somehow intertwined. And there's something about the money and the acting and the... I don't... God forbid you come by your money honestly. Right. Like, what the fuck? It was number one for 15 consecutive weeks. Yeah. I, so I had worked at this movie theater for about a year and a half at this point, And the previous like Christmas season, there wasn't anything that big. Christmas of 96, New Year's 96. Yeah. And it was so slow on New Year's Eve that they sent us home early. We went home at like 9 o'clock. I was like, oh, cool. Not that I had anywhere to go on New Year's Eve in 96. I was single and Mm. like my roommate was home in Michigan. So I had the apartment to myself. So I was just like hanging out and watching movies and shit. So then I volunteered to work New Year's Eve 97 again, figuring. It was going to be dead. It'll be dead. I'll go home early. Not so much. Nope. This movie was fucking busy until like two in the morning. I was Ugh. like, it's New Year's Eve. Why are you here? Right. And I don't think I had watched it yet. I think I kind of resisted it for... Because it was so popular? it was so popular and yeah. so big. And I was like, it can't be that good. Fuck. And then like maybe a week or two later, I went with Eric. And I was like, God damn it. This movie's really fucking good. And that Kate Winslet, I want to fucking marry that girl. Right. God damn it. <laughs> this movie ruined my life. Wow, her son is literally his exact size. That's, that is some luck. That is some luck. 
The unsinkable Molly Brown is also the really super duper lucky Molly Brown. Well, clearly she stumbled onto new money. And then didn't sink. And then didn't sink. She's extremely lucky. Mm-hmm. I love this, uh, this moment where he sees her at the top of the stairs. It's like, oh my God. So I don't know if you remember this. And he this. plays it so cool too. He's yeah, he like, does. You can tell for that one second, he's like, holy fucking shit. Right. No, play it cool. Yeah. So I don't know if you remember this. But I had a dress that was similar in style to that that I wore to a... 2003. Wow. You remembered. Of course I remember. I love that dress. I still have it in the basement. I hung out with you the entire party. I was like, I want to take her home so bad, but I can't. Yeah. I had to wait a year to take you home. This is true. Those noises are creepy. (laughs) Dinner with Jack. Hi, Jack. Welcome to dinner. <laughs> that was unnecessarily violent. Oh, that's a beer. That, my friend, is a lager. It's not a lager. It's an ale. That, my friend, is an ale. Oh. An ale No, not an, it's not any kind of blend. <laughs> it's a fucking ale. A fucking ale? I've never gone into a brewery and seen that on the menu. That there is a stout (laughs) girl. You know what you should do? What? You should become a brewer. Yeah. And open your own brewery. And you can open... I can call everything by the wrong name? No, no, no. You can start a new line of IPAs. And it's like there's like the New England IPAs, there's West Coast IPAs, and then there's the fucking IPAs. What would be different about the fucking IPA? You'd have to... F- I, dip- I didn't. <laughs> Justin, I'm not the brewer. You're the brewer. You figure it out. I named it. Would I dip my dick in it? No, that's... All right. First of all, please do not put that joke in. Why? Because it's gross. And I, I know it's gross. It's awful. And second of all... You called it a fucking IPA. It's the kind that tastes better after that certain kind of activity is what it is. Oh, it's the kind that tastes better after fucking? Sure. Does, so there's cigarettes in it? <laughs> it's smoky. It's a smoky IPA. There you go. <laughs> I don't like smoky beer. Neither do you. I don't think you've thought this through. I came up with the concept. You have to deal with it. Figure it out. I came up with the concept. (laughs) Therefore, you're committed. Go ahead. Wow. Reverse engineer it. Smells like a condom. Tastes like a beer. (laughs) No, 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 no. No. It's getting worse. (laughs) Yep. Well, it wasn't a great idea to begin with. Let's be honest. (laughs) It's a good beer. It is. Thank you, Barrel House Z. Barrel House Z. Dolphins on Parade. Dolphins on Parade! I think it would work much better if you sang it like a dolphin. Is that possible? Hold on. That was a seal. Fuck. That was a seal. <laughs> you were so dedicated. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, take it again. <laughs> oh, what is that? Caviar? Yes, it is. Gross. No caviar for me, thanks. Don't like eating babies. How is it you have means to travel? Well, I rob banks. <laughs> I killed a man and took his wallet. I'm going to rob all of you before we disembark. I think you should know that. Don't fall asleep. <laughs> oh, I, I probably should have waited until we docked to tell you that, because you know where I live. Wait, wait. Was that out loud? Shit. And then all the men folk leave, and they go downstairs and smoke cigars and drink brandy. I like that they uh, they actually do invite Jack. And he's like, yeah, no. No, thanks. I don't like brandy or cigars. But I do like your girlfriend. And, and she's like, going to stay here. I don't like dick measuring contests either. I find that boring. Make it count. Meet me at the clock. And then we can count the numbers on the clock. <laughs> Make it count. Meet me at the clock. And then can you teach me how to read a clock? I realize I didn't give you a time to meet me at the clock because I can't tell it. I love this kind of music. It makes me want to drink fire, a pint fire, to go fire, for fire, 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 fire. It's almost that time of year to be listening to this kind of music. By the way, Tis. we are about to enter the weekend 
that we have been doing this Parents Night In thing for two years. What? That's right. It was President's Day weekend two years ago. What's the two-year birthday anniversary present? Cotton. Happy Cotton Anniversary, Enoughadotcom's Parents Night Woo-hoo! In. That's a lot of words I just said. Happy Cotton Anniversary. T-shirts. Huh? I'm going to buy you some underwear. <laughs> she can't dance in her shoes, but she can dance. That's because her toes are gigantic. <laughs> She has gigantic toes on the Titanic. That was a wah, so we can't count that as a wah. woo. <laughs> He's so exuberant. I could have movie. said a lot of things there, but I went with <laughs> wah. <laughs> oh, now they're having, what are those called? Arm wrestling right. contests? <laughs> Holy shit. I was trying to think of the word. Did you know what I came up with? What? Wrist pushing. <laughs> Wrist pushing? <laughs> Wrist pushing. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. I was like, that's not right. <laughs> Wrist pushing. <gasps> you think you're big tough men? Here she goes. Time to show off her toes. The beginning of that sentence was way more fun than the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Time to show off her toes. Oh no, Bob Cratchit is onto them. The jig is up. The jig is up. Your ass is mine. The jig is up. Uh, well, actually, no, the jig is still going on. Mm-hmm. But once this jig is over, the jig is up. And then your ass is mine. Oh, yeah? I'm going to tell Cal you said that. <laughs> I'm going to tell gonna, Cal on you. Cal's going to say, no, her ass is not yours. Her ass is mine. And here we are back at the beginning of the story. Mm. This is why she wants to jump off a boat. Hi, Cal. Why are you looking at me like you want to kill me? <laughs> What's that from? Nothing. I just made it up. No, no, that's from something. I, I, if it is, I'm not aware of it. I just made it up. You've already been made a fool of, Cal. You said that Picasso wouldn't amount to anything and the ship can't sink. You're already a fool. Plus, you're wearing a toupee in 1912. Her dad was apparently very irresponsible with money. And she's just too worried to lose her money, so... Well, well she, to she just... Rich. You're right, she wants to... She's born in a world in which her only job is to marry rich... Mm-hmm. Her mother has no son, so she's the one who has to social climb, the one. Wow. You know what I think is annoying is that, er, and, er, and, er, and so narcissistic. She's like, why are you being so selfish? Right. Like, like uh, no, it's not her. Um, you could go get a job, ma. <laughs> well, to be fair, I mean, if you go back to like the little women time frame. Well, that was a damn sight before this. No, I know, but I'm just saying the narrative of some of that stuff is that I know. women didn't have their own financial independence well, and once they married but, their stuff wasn't theirs anymore. Right, but widows had their own financial independence. Any money they earn, earned was theirs at that point. Like mm. She could have gotten a job and it would have been hers. She wasn't Right, but anymore. women didn't get lucrative jobs. I, I understand, but like it's not your daughter's responsibility to ensure that you're financially okay. Yeah, except in those days it was. I know. It's fucked up. Oh, good. Speed up. That's smart. Speed up in the presence of icebergs, you dumb fuck. I think speeding up is important because we need to be able to show everyone what this immense ship can do. Yes. Size, 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 size. Size, <laughs> speed, velocity. When you fuck that ocean, you get in there and fuck it. Wow, that was something. Oh, well, that's what he's trying to do, basically. Also, how in the fuck... Was there no safety codes that said you have to have enough lifeboats for everyone on board in yeah. case the ship sinks? I don't know. How the fuck did no one think of that? I don't give a shit how indestructible you think the thing is. Like, that's insanity. Mm-hmm. But, you know, deregulation. Awesome. God damn, people are fucking stupid. He's like, shh, motherfucker, I just walked away from that kind of relationship. I don't need it now. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. I expect to be heard, God damn it! Is he gonna woo in her ear? Woo! <laughs> Ow! God damn Not it! Not in my ear, Jack. Uh, I'm flying, Jack. I'm flying. I'm flying, Jack. <laughs> Kissy times. Oh, kissies. Kissies are the best. Speaking as a woman, that is a very uncomfortable way to kiss. Yes, but it's hot. For the guy, anyway. I don't know how it is for you people, but... It hurts. Well, you know... It hurts your neck. It's hot for us. So... Okay. Keep doing it. Wow. (laughs) 
Oh my god, the ship is rotting underneath them. Oh god, it's metaphorical. This movie is PG-13, but it included a fuck and titties. Oh, oh. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of boobs for PG-13. That's a, that's a hard PG-13. Yeah. <laughs> I'm shocked. And it includes some fucking. Yeah. Uh, I mean, implied. Implied fucking, but fucking nonetheless. That's crazy, though. Yeah. So I was thinking earlier, I'm like, oh, hey, we could watch this soon. And then I was like, oh, God, boobs. I mean, he's seen boobs. No, I know. We've all seen boobs. <laughs> Lucky us. <laughs> That's goddamn right. Uh, yeah, so his lieutenant or whatever is like, oh, the water's really still. It's going to make the icebergs harder to spot with no breaking water. The captain's like, mm-hmm, yeah, okay, well, I'm going to go downstairs. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> Fucking asshole. She gives him the finger. Was that a thing back then? Oh, yeah, I think it's been around for a while. Has it? I think so. And how did someone decide, look, whatever you do, <laughs> don't stick up that middle digit of yours. All by itself. That's rude. Any other combination is fine, but not alone. It's such an odd thing. The human race actually invented words that no one's ever supposed to say and gestures that you're not supposed to use. Right. What a bunch of sick assholes we are. So you were saying that, um, I don't think we got this on the recording. You were saying that Kate Winslet said she can't watch this movie now. Oh, yeah, so she, I've read interviews with her where she's like, oh, my God, I watched that movie. And I'm like, why did you do it that way? Or why did you make that choice? And she gets very, like, embarrassed to watch it. There are definitely a few moments watching it now where I'm like, okay. She went a little creepy. Yeah, like a little sort of animated. She was a very young actress and... I mean, she's a phenomenal oh, actress. Oh, I love, I love Kate Winslet. But you can but see that she's more green here. Yes. She's like 21 years old. Yeah. And She's, like, just so much more measured and, and confident now. Yes. But I think her, this character, that, ca- it works well for this character She's supposed to be 17, bit. yeah. Right, and it works well for the character because she's, like, trying to figure out who she is in this world where she's always been told how to be. Right. Put your hands on me, Jack. He's like, you don't have to ask me twice. That's <laughs> all I've ever wanted. You know what I liked about that? He waited for consent. Mm. He's a gentleman. He's a gentleman and a scholar. No, he's not a scholar. He's a gentleman and an artist. He's discovered the safe with the note and the drawing. Well, you know, my name's Jack Dawson and I like to do drawings. I like to draw your fiancé naked. So come and look at my drawings. <laughs> oh, I've got prunans. <laughs> That's what Jack says after he can't get on the door. <laughs> I've got prunans because I've been drowning in the ocean. <laughs> Presumably, the, uh, Cal has not actually gotten to deflower her yet. You think? I don't know. I mean, she's 17 in high society. I don't... I feel like back then that, that didn't happen so much. I disagree. I feel like you it wasn't that she's spoken fucked Cal? about. I don't know. I kind of He seems doubt like it. the kind of guy that'd be like, I'm not waiting. I don't not. know, but he's proper. He's from old money. I, I feel like he was trained to wait. Oh, good. So Jack, Kate and Leo are the reason that yeah. they crashed into the fucking iceberg. Jack and Rose caused what? the deaths of all of, of those 1,500 people, people because the idiot lookouts were not paying attention to their job. And they'll look, they have the whole ocean and they're going to bump they into just that there. one iceberg. That is the opposite of Molly Brown's luck. Will you hold my beer for a moment? Hold my beer. What are you going to do? Crash your fucking car into an iceberg? <laughs> I don't drive with beer in my hand. Oh, wait. No. In this case, my car would be the iceberg. <sighs> Boom. So, What does he say there? I think Butana is bitch. Oh. Son of a bitch, maybe? Son of a bitch. There's a lot of good Italian slang. <laughs> Without a little bit of a Google hole. The Google hole? <laughs> It's like a rabbit hole, but in Google. I poked my finger around the Google <laughs> hole. <laughs> I poked my finger in the Google hole and it got bit. <laughs> and I pulled out a plum of Italian slang. <sighs> what a good boy am I. Thunk. What's interesting is that Jack's hand is in his pocket and he stuck something in his pocket. He's got one hand in his pocket and the other one's diddling your fiance. <laughs> Oh, here's the abusive boyfriend thing. He's horrifying. I would not want him to be my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I would not want him to be my boyfriend. <laughs> And then he looks at her like, oh, it's, it's so typical when we're right in the middle of a really important discussion, isn't it? It's so funny that this stranger has seen you naked and I haven't. <laughs> hmm. So how did telegraph work? No, when you're on the sea. I know how that part of it works, but like they didn't have telegraph lines in the ocean. Sonar through the water? Radio waves? Yeah. Fucking hell. If you ever need someone to do sound effects. I'll call you to do boo 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 I feel like there's a news report coming. Wow. Asshole on the loose. Details 11. Molly Brown has new money. <laughs> really taking this all the way. <laughs> Molly Brown has a life vest. Sources say she can't be sunk. <laughs> Mr. Andrews says we're fucked. I tried to interview him, but he ran screaming. <laughs> <laughs> he ran screaming and jumped into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Crashing through a stained glass window. There's Mr. Andrews' size hole, <laughs> hole. in the window. There's a hole in the shape of Mr. Andrews. If you want to listen to pretty music while you die, go to the deck where the violin is. <laughs> the string quartet will be here all week. Or until we're underwater, whichever comes first. <laughs> Oh, poor El Capitan. Well, it's his fault. It's lots of people's fault. No, it's his fault. Instead of listening to some guy waving his dick around, he should have said, I'm the captain. I will decide how fast we go. Wow, this music is so lovely. (sighs) Now I can get into my lifeboat calmly. I would have been playing very fast. (laughs) Probably panicked. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, you're... You know, you should play that... What is that song? Are you rushing or are you dragging? The Flight of the Bumblebee? No, no, no. That's not Flight of the Bumblebee. Candide? Is it Candide? I don't know the name of it. So I think it's pretty um, common knowledge at this point that when they filmed this, they were on like a soundstage, but they also used water in these from the Baja. Fucking freezing water. Yeah, from the Pacific Ocean. Yes. Um, and it was freezing cold. And so when she jumps into the water and she actually like sort of squeals, "Ah!" that's like a, her actual reaction. Yes, yes. yes. Like she was not acting. Yeah. She said it was an extremely strenuous, not totally safe shoot Mm. during these scenes. Like she was actually worried. There's this scene where like the water's rushing at them or something. Yeah. And they have to like duck under it or some shit. When they have to go under the rafter thing? Yeah, yeah, Yeah. they have to swim under it. And she was like, we were legit scared we were going to drown. Right. What am I drinking now, Kelly? Give up. I'm drinking Lord Hobo Boom Sauce. Boom! Boom! Local beer, boom! Christian Bale auditioned for the role, but was turned down because Cameron didn't want two British actors playing the lead of two Americans. Oh, for Christ's sakes. That's interesting because Leo DiCaprio was originally supposed to play Patrick Bateman. Oh, that is interesting. With Oliver Stone directing. First film since 1966 to win the Oscar for Best Picture, but not be nominated for screenplay. What was the previous film to hold that honor? 1965 film that won it in 1966. Sound of Music. Yes. You're weird. I'm awesome is what you meant to say. Huh. Lindsay Lohan auditioned for the role of Cora. Really? Yep. She was eight years old. She was top choice for the role. But her fiery red hair would confuse people into thinking she was related to the Rose and Ruth. Really? Oh, there, she's a redhead. She must be related to the other two redheads. It's the first film that Cameron ever directed that did not include or mention nuclear weapons. Dude! What? Fifth wife. This is his fifth wife. Fifth? He was still married to Linda Hamilton. He was married to her. But they were, no, at the time that he met... No, I mean, I mean, number like, five. I wasn't sure if they actually got married. Or oh not. yeah, they were they were married, had been living apart for some time. Ha. And his one with number five has lasted longest. So apparently, five is the magic number. <laughs> you have four more to go. I do. Yeah. Hot damn. Oh. <laughs> ah. 
I like when she says, when we dock, I'm getting off with you. And he's like, yeah, I think you just did. <laughs> no? Am I right, fellas? Am I right? Oh, no one's around. <laughs> I think you just did. Am I right, boys? <laughs> Faye Ray was originally offered the role of older Rose. Really? Yep. Oh. But she didn't get to scream enough? Faye Ray, when she was young, was so hot. Yeah, she was gorgeous. Jesus Christ. Yeah, she was absolutely gorgeous. Oh, Mr. Ismay gets on a boat. What a fucking douche. Pretty sure this actually happened, too. No, it did. Uh, I just read about it. So he got on the boat. He averted his eyes when it sank. Yep. And when he got onto the Carpathia, as they were being rescued, he, like, climbed on, and everyone basically just stared at him. And he just sort of went and hid, and he lived a longish life and had a stroke and died. A fucking scumbag. Yep, I'm surprised he could live with himself after that. Mm-hmm. He should have rode the bullet train, since it was more or less his fault. Mm-hmm. Jack talks about going ice fishing on Lake Wasoda in Chippewa Falls as a child. When the Titanic sank in 1912, the lake had not been created yet. It was created by a dam in 1917. Really? Mm-hmm. What a liar! That lying son of a bitch. Yep. Frankly, I'm glad he's dead. Here's the moment, Kelly. This is the moment. You ready for it? Yep. Am I going to blubber? Yes. She's being lowered. She's watching the man she loves and the man that she thought she loved. And because he's a gentleman. flare's going off. Because he's a gentleman, he's not giving her any indication that there's not an arrangement. No. He's just watching her go. And then she's like, you know what? Fuck this shit. Rose! And she jumps back on the boat. And that was the moment in which I blubbered like a and moron like, in the movie theater. You're so stupid, Rose. I was with my college boyfriend and I was like, <laughs> And Cal just can't let it go. He's like ready to cry. And it, it makes you wonder too, like, I don't think he really loves her. It's really a pride thing. It's a property thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pride, like... I'm a rich man. No one will ever get the better of me. Why would you try to shoot them at this point? Because he, it's a pride thing. He's angry. He's I gonna, know, but he's like... He's gonna get his... For all he knows, they're both gonna drown anyway. Yeah. Why waste the energy? Because just in case they don't, he doesn't want them to be together. What a fucking It's punishment for both. Asshole. If one of them dies, both of them are punished. This was sort of one of those unnecessary action movie scenes, too. Right. He's gotta go all the way underwater to get the key and then... Yeah. Get, Unlock the door before they drown at the last second. I can't do it. He just said, I can't do it. <laughs> he said, which one is it, Rose? Oh. Like, How, I don't know. Why would she know? <laughs> she build the fucking thing? See, if we were in this emergency situation, you'd be like, it's not the sharp one. He already tried the sharp one. <laughs> I wouldn't say, which one is it, Kelly? No, you probably wouldn't. Tell I'd me say, which one to use. No, you'd say... I'm going to do all three of these. And I would say, maybe you should try the fourth one. And you'd be like, you already tried it. I hate you. Is that what I would say? No. And, and so how much time elapsed between the hitting the iceberg and this in real life? I think it was, like two, I think it was two hours between the iceberg hitting and the ship underwater. Mm. That is an incredibly long time to be panicked. And an incredibly short time for this gigantic vessel to be underwater. Yes. Yeah, right. Good luck to you. And then he just starts playing and they're all like, fuck it. Let's just all go down playing. Mm-hmm. That's a musician. Yep. Of course, if it was me, I'd play like Run to the Hills or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Run to the hills. <laughs> I'm for your lives. There's no hills and we're all going to die. But thank you, <laughs> Mr. Musician, for lifting our spirits. Swim for your life. This is the super sad part, though, because then you see the people who have decided to stay in the yes. ship and go down. He's, and he's it's stand, heartbreaking. He stands by the wheel and just waits for the fucking water to collapse his bridge, whatever. Mr. Andrews stays and sets the clock correctly. Yeah, make sure that he's synchronized all the clocks. The old couple sits in their bed as water is rushing under it. That's heartbreaking. Yes. That also made me blubber. And this woman, too. As a parent, that moment yes. is not something a lot of parents could pull off. No. Because it requires you to put all of your fear aside yep. to keep your child calm. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Nope. I'd be like, fuck this shit. We're going to punch people to get on that boat. Mm-hmm. 
Jeremy Sisto screen tested opposite Kate Winslet for the role of Jack Dawson. Hmm. Sinking with the homies. <laughs> he would have been better as uh, Cal. Yeah. Why would she go with Jack? Right. Do you even know who my father is? <laughs> the movie lasts 34 minutes longer than it actually took the Titanic to sink. Yeah. Take a deep breath when I say, okay, Mr. Man. He's trying to help her. It doesn't seem too mansplainy because she doesn't know what to do. <laughs> How does he know what to do? Because yeah, he swam in a fictional lake? No, his whole thing, though, is about inspiring confidence and keeping her safe. Uh-huh. Because even when there wasn't a plan and he knew he was going to die, he didn't let on. Uh-huh. They easily could have fit on this door together. God damn it. Look how big that thing is. He got on it from the wrong side. All he had to do is swim around to the other side. Don't be fucking stupid, Jack. Jack sacrificed himself for her safety. Yeah, I know, but he could have, they could have saved both of them. Well. Climb on the other side. Jack doesn't care. You asshole. (laughs) Poor Jack must be freezing. Imagine how many more drawings you could have done had you lost that poker hand. But he never would have drawn Kate Winslet's boobs. It's true. (laughs) The one drawing he's known for. (laughs) Fuck, what's that guy's name? I swear he's been in something else. I think it's Wally the actor. Kelly! (laughs) His name's not Wally the fucking actor! Well, maybe. Well, maybe? His name is Eon... Eon... (laughs) His name is Eon Eon? (laughs) Eon Mascara. Like Elon Musk, but not... Ian Scary Arrier. Come back. Come back. Come back. Jack. There's a boat. There's a boat. I'm sorry, Rose. Beep bop beep boop boop. He dayed. Come back. Come back. Come back. Yeah, hey, get over here. <laughs> I also loved. That after they get on the Carpathia, Rose is able to avoid her family. Mm. And Cal. My friend, welcome to the Carpathia. <laughs> I am anxiously expecting you. Oh, she took Jack's name. She's the best. You never spoke to anyone of him till this point? Anyone? Pretty sure Bill Paxton is... Uh, Watching over us right now? No, a metaphor <laughs> for James Cameron. You think? Three years thought of nothing but Titanic, but never let it in. Can I marry you, though? (laughs) Then this old broad just throws the fucking diamond into the ocean. She kept it this whole time. She had it the whole time. She has the heart. I don't know how that survived the plunge into the ocean, but... Yeah. I guess we'll worry about the physics lesson later. (laughs) That didn't get sucked down or out or anything. Maybe Cal's pockets have... Suction? Yeah. Or like a button flap. Look at that. She flew a plane. She was a starlet. She rode an elephant. And an airplane. She was Amelia Earhart. She was Amelia Earhart and short round. (laughs) Lady Godiva. Wait. She was on a horsey. (laughs) I know you. You were on a horsey. She's the devil and she's here to do the devil's work. No, it was dumber than that. <laughs> oh, she dayed. That was another wonderful moment. It was like she threw the heart in the ocean, so, and then her heart died, and then she found her heart in Jack. So hold on, though. She had a granddaughter, which means that she married, or at least... Yeah, she married somebody. Banged a guy. No, no, she got married. But the guy meant so little to her that he wasn't in any of her pictures. And then she dies, and she just goes back to this guy that she knew for four days... Fair point. Kelly. That is a fair point. That means the whole time she was married to him, she was really thinking about this other guy. Yeah. You know, that makes me wonder, Justin, who are you holding a flame for? Laura a- from fifth grade, obviously. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that was supposed to be a rhetorical question. Here's what I want to know. Okay. Parents night in aficionados. Parents night in nurse. How... That doesn't seem like a good... we got to come up with a different... Parents Night Innies. Pniers. Pianites. 
So how do you feel about this movie? Is this like a guilty pleasure movie? Is it a is it a movie that you think is a joke and then you watch it and you're like, no joke, awesome movie? Or do you think it's just poop in a bottle? And if it's poop in a bottle, you can jump off a you can boat. Go to hell. <laughs> no, I, I, it's a very good movie. It's it's how many somewhere... stars out of how many stars? Oh, I don't know. It's somewhere in between like old school epic Oscar bait movie from the 50s and 60s mm-hmm. and romantic fluff from the 90s. You know yeah. what I mean? It's somewhere in between that. And it's got a little action-y thing going for it that works. And, you know, the epic stuff works well. Right. I feel like this was, as far as, like, it winning a bunch of Oscars, it was Hollywood's sort of nostalgic thing. Like, yeah. we used to make movies like this, mm-hmm. and we don't anymore. Right. Because it was the cynical late 90s. Star-crossed lovers, West Side Story. So, 22 plus years later. Holds up for me, except for the crappy CG. Mostly, yeah. Yeah, the story works really well for me. The story works. You know, you definitely see some early Kate Winslet uncertainty that you don't see in her other films. Yes. Um, But the Jack and Rose thing just is so good. Their chemistry is off the charts. The chemistry is great. It is nice to sit and watch it sort of front to back. Because it's one of those movies that, like, you come into the room if it's on, and it's like, oh, that's on. I'll watch some. Yeah, I'll watch an hour of it. Right, but it's like, I'll watch some. You don't really sit down and watch the whole thing. So, at the time that this was nominated for the Oscar, I was rooting for it. I was rooting for Kate Winslet to win Best Actress. She didn't. Who won? Helen Hunt for uh, As Good As It Gets. That was a really good. Yeah, she she was was great in that. Like, I was fine with her winning that. And I was rooting for Titanic to win Best Picture at the time. Mm-hmm. I think now I probably would have given it to Goodwill Hunting. Oh, that was the same time? It was the same year, yeah. Goodwill Hunting's great. Goodwill Hunting holds up uh, amazingly. Yeah. But, uh, you know. But the epicness of this movie. Yes. Yeah, so it's. You can't deny the craftsmanship that went into it. It's an um, extremely well made yeah. Hollywood epic. And it's not one of those Hollywood epics that gets made in one era. Where it's like, oh, this was clearly a period picture made in the 90s versus a period picture made in the 80s versus a period picture made in the 70s. Do you know what I mean? right. Like the 90s Little Women looks like a period picture made in the 90s. Dirty Dancing looks like a 60s picture made in the 80s. There are moments that this looks like the 90s because of the technology involved. Yeah, technology-wise, yes, but I mean, like... But in terms of... Hairstyles, costuming, Right, 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 right. They They didn't sort of, like... Contemporarize. The, the technology con- is all, contempor- contemporize. It, yeah. Yes. <laughs> the technology I'm is the, tired, o- it's like... the only thing that limits the movie. Aside from that, it's pretty timeless. Are you glad we finally covered this one? I'm glad we did it. Yeah. No regrets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a no regrets tattoo. Make every moment count. Oh my God. Here's to making it count. Oh my God, I have a new mantra. What? What do you mean, what? Make it count. Yes. Oh. You said make it count. And I said, oh my God, I have a new mantra. And you said, what? Well, I thought like you, I was going to say, reminded you of poop the bed. <laughs> Here's to making it count. Go meet me by the clock. Yes. And, and my thought was, ooh, new mantra. Trim the tree. And my thought was, go meet me at fuck o'clock. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and follow us on Twitter, MeWe, and Facebook.